And thank you everyone for signing up to the, the monthly My Story session that uh, I typically host uh, all the time. And our um, host is Naveen. Um, I'll give an intro about uh, Naveen soon. And this is, uh, you know, we're getting towards the end of the year and, uh, you know, we just had, uh, you know, wonderful Tycon mid-year and then a lot of other learning programs for entrepreneurs. As you know, Ty is an organization started by the entrepreneurs for the entrepreneurs. We've got different type of, uh, uh, you know, activities for our entrepreneurs capturing from the idea of starting a company all the way to exit. We've got lots of programs for educating, mentoring, networking, investing and incubating, you know, all that possibility is there. We work closely with uh, our partner organizations too. And, uh, you know, you know, I'm glad all of you are here to listen to wonderful story, um, I, you know, from Sheng. But let me just give a quick intro to uh, Naveen. Um, Naveen Bisht is a founder and CEO of Akitra, it's a cybersecurity and a compliance automation startup. Um, he's been a serial entrepreneur, he's founded multiple companies, um, you know, uh, in the security and networking infrastructure industries. He was a founder and CEO of uh, Strax, Secure Act, Nina Networks, and Okia Software that was acquired by Novell. Uh, he's been associated with Thai for a long time. He's been the past chair for the programs. He's a board member of Thai Silicon Valley and started my story session since uh, 2001. And again, you know, if you tell stories of entrepreneurs, all of us get inspired and we can, you know, build. And he's been doing that consistently. He pursued his PhD studies uh, at University of California, Santa Barbara, and he's master's from Texas Tech and uh, BSMS from the BITS uh, in India. He, was, he holds five patents in the areas of AI, security, networking, and has published several papers and articles on entrepreneurship and industry trends. Thank you very much, Naveen. It's been a pleasure to work with you in terms of, um, uh, you know, doing this events month on month. And, you know, over the last uh, couple of years, you know, I got to know you, uh, through you, a lot of these successful entrepreneurs. And as my term is coming to an end, which is in December, you know, um, you know, the journey continues for Thai Silicon Valley and, and we'll continue to support all the entrepreneurs. Thank you very much. Please take it away from here. Thank you, AZK. Thank you again. A big round of virtual applause to you uh, for your, you know, chief volunteer services to Thai community. And of course, being a charter member for a long time, just like I've been. And so we really, really appreciate it very much. And of course, we continue to see you be involved as actively as you have been. So uh, with that, um, I think we'll get started in today's our amazing speaker we have. Um, so good, good morning. And to folks, if there are some folks who are attending from the Asia Pacific or India and other parts, and uh, good evening to folks who are here. So today, uh, one of the things is just please write down your question, few questions in your uh, the quest Q and A section, so that we can, um, you know, Shang, our amazing speaker today, I'll tell you in a second, can address those and answer any other and provide any other insights from his amazing entrepreneurial career. So today uh, we have Sheng Liang, who is, a, who is an amazing entrepreneur. In fact, um, I had done my story when we had started in uh, back in early 2012, when I started, when I used to be on the board of Thai. This is my story program with Vish Mishra, who is one of the co-founders of Thai as well as past president. And to, to have the entrepreneurs come and share their journey and celebrate entrepreneurship by providing insights, lessons learned. And I had invited Shang in July of 2012 to share his my story. A few months ago, I thought, you know, it'll be great because I was looking at what Shang had accomplished in over last 10 years after his, uh, the, the company, when he came and shared his story is amazing. Um, so, so that Shang can reflect on that um, and provide his insight. So basically, you know, the, the Shang has been in the forefront of, creating software companies for the cloud infrastructure. And this is what he has been doing for the last 15 years since, like I said, over 10 years ago, I had requested him to come and share his story. He's, he was founder of Econ Labs. He's founder of Econ Labs right now, which is his fourth company from what I know. 
um, and that he recently founded to solve some of the biggest problems facing the app developers. Prior to this, Shang had founded Rancher Labs in 2014. It's the most popular enterprise Kubernetes platform that was acquired by SUS in 2020. And SUS is a global leader in innovative, reliable, and enterprise-grade open source solutions. And over 60% of the Fortune 500 companies power their mission critical workloads using that. Prior to that, he founded cloud.com in 2008. And it was to build on-prem infrastructure as a service clouds like Amazon EC2. And it was acquired by Citrix in 2011. And that's when I had invited Shen to share his story. But not only that, he's the only entrepreneur who has gone and sold two companies to Cisco, at least uh, some, one of the few ones I know of, uh, sorry, to Citrix. His earlier company was also sold to Citrix. He's, uh, as I mentioned, he's currently founder of Econ Labs. And before his entrepreneurial journey, he had started as a staff engineer in, as in um, Java Software Group at Sun Microsystems. And he worked on the Java Virtual Machines. And he has a BS from the University of, University of Science and Technology of China and a PhD from Yale University. So with that, I would like to um, invite Sheng to share his exciting, colorful, and amazing entrepreneurial journey with us this evening. So let's give him a big round of virtual applause. And Sheng, here you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I uh, really, uh, really appreciate this opportunity, Naveen, and the, and the Thai team. Uh, thanks for audience members. Uh, for, thanks the audience members for you know, taking time out of a busy week, uh, a weekday to, to listen to my story. And I'll try to uh, you know, make it just not my story, but at least some of my learnings and uh, centered around uh, uh, some of my recent entrepreneurial journey. And the, uh, uh, this is a very dynamic uh, experience. The, the situation always changes. There's definitely no uh, one right path or wrong path to do things. So, so I hope, uh, you know, whatever uh, uh, I'm going to talk about is going to have uh, uh, be helpful for, for, for some of you. And uh, uh, I'm going to try to not talk too long. And, and hopefully at the end, we'll have uh, some time for, for, for discussions. Okay. And so just like Naveen said, my uh, so, so that I put the major things that I've, uh, I think Naveen already covered it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I started my career as an engineer. So, so naturally, I'm going to approach uh, entrepreneurship from a from a product perspective, uh, and then uh, uh, recently, at least in the last fifteen years, uh, my journey has been uh, mostly in the in the area of cloud infrastructure. You know, started from cloud.com, which uh, really did virtual machine infrastructure. Then we got into containers. You know, with 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 the popularity of Docker, and then. Um, uh, uh, most recently, just a, just a few months ago, I started Acorn Labs to uh, to build an application platform for for you know for for for, for the modern cloud native world. So uh, and and uh, again, I said uh, there there are really many ways to to do this kind of stuff. There's really no right way or wrong way. At the end of the day, you know, whatever is successful uh, uh, works. But but I'm I'm mostly going to talk about some learnings from um, my experience and, and and probably the most recent experiences with Rancher Labs. But that's that's not really not the only experience that that influences me. And uh, 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 and I'm going to uh, focus on early stage because I think that's that's probably where you know most of the uh, this audience would be interested in, and um, uh, there, are, you know, companies in different stages face different challenges, and and there's a lot to be said about you know uh, growing the business to the next level, just uh, the same as starting the business from scratch. But uh, but but we can't possibly talk about everything, and and certainly my you know my experience has been mostly on. On you know growing businesses from you know from zero to uh, you know to to 
uh, to still a, a late stage, a growth stage uh, uh, company size. So, so I'll definitely talk about that. Uh, and, uh, and also um, um, my focus has been largely around building software and online services uh, to sell to business customers, either enterprise or and or you know small medium business customers, and uh, and and you know if you're you're into consumers, you're into devices, you're into financial services, uh, um, healthcare, you know, those probably uh, the experience would be quite different. Uh, so I, I want to uh, just talk a bit about my most recent journey uh, on one slide. Uh, we, uh, we, I, we we started uh, Rancher in 2014, eight years ago. Uh, at, at the time, uh, Docker was just taking off. It was the hottest um, um, uh, technology uh, in the in the you know in the cloud infrastructure space, and uh, developers already using Docker to package software. So what was obviously needed is to create a management platform for containers for the enterprise. So, so we were one of many companies that uh, got started around that time. I, I don't think we were the latest, we were the youngest, but we definitely weren't, we weren't even close to being the earliest. So we're like somewhere in the middle. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, when we got started, they, they, you know, there's a <clears throat> core piece of technology that, that was lacking was, uh, an orchestrator, so people know how to deal with individual containers. But when you, you know, want to run uh, containerized applications in the cloud, you need an orchestrator to deal with to to manage many containers. And Kubernetes wasn't there yet, so 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 we were all building our own orchestrators. So we actually built one called Cattle, and it was uh, it was quite popular. In the early days, uh, but then, of course, very quickly, Kubernetes it was became obvious to us, to everyone in the industry, that Kubernetes, I'm sure many of you have heard of, uh, uh, became an industry standard. So, so we pivoted the company to Kubernetes. But then, of course, um, uh, then uh, the challenge is, you know, how to stand out amongst literally dozens uh, uh, of, of Kubernetes vendors. Everyone was doing Kubernetes either. Like us, you know, creating a Kubernetes distro, a Kubernetes platform uh, by itself, or they're you know building tools around the Kubernetes platform. So, so we have to, we had to work very hard to 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 stand out, and that was probably the, uh, uh, you know, the the, the 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 biggest challenge we we had at Rancher, and and we competed with a lot of you know household names in our industry, like like Docker. Uh, uh, and 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 very big companies like Red Hat and VMware and and many many more. Uh, so 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 that was quite an interesting journey to uh, uh, to uh, 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 build a you know market leading product and also to generate uh, a lot of uh, awareness and recognition. So so we could close a lot of deals. And, and probably, uh, you know, more recently, one of the piece of technology that we were known for was we created a small footprint, lightweight Kubernetes called K3S. And that, that's, that has become the, uh, the, the, uh, the edge Kubernetes standard. So like Kubernetes deployed on, you know, on small footprint devices outside of the cloud. Um, and, and the company was, uh, was acquired by SUSE a, a few, a couple of years ago. So, so that's that's kind of a brief history of Rancher. So I'm gonna next. I'm like I said. I'm I'm gonna just launch into a few topics that 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 certainly influenced me uh, along the way of Rancher. So, so um, uh, the first is I'm sure uh, uh, you know a lot of you have experienced or may, maybe about experiences. You know how to given the desire how to get started and and what would be the uh, uh, what would be the, the 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 trigger to to go say from a uh, you know from your current job or to 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 turn in resignation to start a company and at least what always worked for me was to um, uh, was was to leave not when you know not when you're unhappy about your current job not just that you're unhappy you could be quite happy with your job but if if you believe you got some insight 
into building a new product. I mean, that's really the key, right? Some something you feel like you know something uh, uh, that that um, that uh, other people don't quite know, or you feel you just know it better to build a product that's either you know either a a, a category uh, a creator or something that's remarkably better than than uh, uh, than the kind of product people already have in the same category. So so that's kind of what happened to me you know when when I started cloud.com I mean certainly taking the taking the cues from uh, from AWS and AWS was already starting and I and I recognized that AWS EC2 back then you know around 2007 2008 was a was a was a was a was a very already a very successful service even at the beginning, but they certainly didn't have to invent uh, the hypervisor technology. You know, Citrix and Zen back then was Zen Source and uh, invented it. Invented Zen and VMware obviously invented this whole industry, but Amazon somehow by uh, turned it into a service. So 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 that that kind of certainly gave me idea to to build a product. You know, around you. Uh, to sort of replicate what Amazon did, and 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 Doc, I mean, I think Rancher was a little bit more obvious because uh, because I can just totally see the parallel between uh, you know between managing VMs and managing containers. It turned out we had to learn a lot more along the way, but 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 even back then, back in 2014, I I, I knew I felt I knew enough to you know walk away from from my job at. Uh, at, at, at Citrix. And, and that's really very important because uh, if I didn't have that, I mean, certainly not only would it be hard for me to walk away, it certainly would have been impossible to uh, convince uh, uh, my co-founders or, or some of the early engineers to, you know, to, to, to join us. Again, walking away from very lucrative uh, uh, roles that they already have. And it's, it's the, the motivation is really, uh, at least what I've experienced is all about Knowing that that we 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 thought we we believed we knew a better way of doing something and 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 then uh, at, at least personally I, I I never like the insight the actual insight to be honest I I didn't really get by you know by networking or by even by you know reading books or, or anything like that uh, honestly any little bit of an insight I got tend to come from. <laughs> doing the work I was already doing, because at the end of the day, there's nothing like the amount of depth that, 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 that your job <laughs> uh, uh, can actually bring to, to how you think about things, how you solve problems. So I, that's why I always advise people, you know, until, uh, uh, until they're, they're ready to move, just do your job really well. And if you if you don't like your job, you don't love your work, then then find a better job that you actually love, and don't just you know. Uh, uh, generally, if 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 someone is just uh, sort of uh, uh, you know uh, really not putting the the, the 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 right effort at work and and trying to on the, at the same time figuring out something better to do, uh, I mean that that's just not my style. I don't think it works very well because. Uh, all, all, you know, that's also unfair to your current employer. So I always advise people just to find something that you're passionate about. And, and, and you know, a lot of folks that, that I hired uh, uh, into cloud.com or into uh, quite a few people or into Rancher, they all ended up, you know, later on became very successful entrepreneurs themselves. And again, I could, I could tell because even, even when they were working for us, I mean, they demonstrated so much passion and, and they clearly, they had just had a level of exceptionalism like way beyond that, that, that your you know, normal expectation. So normally you can tell how successful uh, someone is gonna be as an entrepreneur, I believe by you know, looking at how good he, he is working, he or she is you know, working at a, uh, a big company or, or at a startup. So, so, so I think that's, the, that's, that's really the right way. Um, then, uh, then once you know you, you got some insight, so you, you you quit and you kind of build a product and 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 hire some people, you know, manage to manage to raise some money. Uh, but 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 I think a lot of startup, you know, my own startup included. One of our big challenges is always how to stand out, how to generate awareness, how to you know make people know you so they will buy buy your product, right? And and I think it's a uh, 
it's always, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a topic that's extremely important, that's extremely sensitive for me because, uh, you know, like many of you, I started as an, as an engineer and sort of was not really, we were not known as engineers, we were not known to be promoters, right? So, so I think there was, a, luckily that era has passed, but there was a time in Silicon Valley that, that, that investors wouldn't even invest in engineers because, you know, engineers themselves would, would only know how to create a product and not know how to promote it. That was the idea. But, but I think at the end of the day, you know, what I, what I learned is over and over again is a, a good product that speak for itself. And if, you know, you can't really market something that's bad. So, so you generally can't go wrong by, by building a genuinely great product. And then and the other thing I think I, I, I appreciate more and more is, uh, is, is, is the personal brand. You know, it's because it's, it's these are creating companies or it's always a long journey. So like, I think I, I, only, got, I only got the investment for my first companies because uh, one of the VCs I happened to work with a long time ago just remembered me as a, as a, as a great employee, as a great engineer at Sun. You know, so so that was what it took. I mean, that alone was enough for for him to 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 write me the first check, uh, the the seed investment check. So so um uh, so so it is it is it is important. And nowadays, I, I feel like we continuously uh, got benefited because the 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 the, the companies we work, we you know the, the customers we served in the past, the the, the community members we've helped. They just keep coming back, you know. If not buying buying our product uh, straight off, they would give us encouragement, give us feedback. So so it, it's really helpful, and it would spread the word for us. So it's a you know it's a, it's a it, it is an echo chamber. So so that's really helpful. So always pay attention. That's that's why you should always be a you know be a good employee, be a um, um, do an whatever you do, try to do an excellent job, try to be known as someone who just who, who's who. Who, you know who just over delivers and then uh, and then of course there's a lot of you know marketing tools strategies and tactics you know social media was 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 very hot for a while and it's still very effective you know open source uh, that's one of my favorite uh, 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 ways of generating awareness and and we very successfully uh, leveraging all, all my companies but but at the end of the day those are I mean I think those are useful but they're not they're not really. I don't think these are as important as a, as you know building a good product and and, and create a brand and and establish a good reputation for yourself. But but you know but that's obviously you should you you should leverage all the all the all the all the tools that's out there. So then then uh, uh, pretty quickly like at Rancher and 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 at uh, at uh, Cloud.com you know we 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 built a product. And we generated some awareness, and then very quickly uh, we found ourselves in the situation of facing, you know, dozens, literally dozens of competitors. And usually, amongst dozens of competitors, there'll be, you know, at least a handful that's very well funded, and they probably have better funding than yourself, and uh, and they'll be funded by better brand investors, at least. And and then you also compete against some 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 big incumbents, whether it's you know VMware or Google or Cisco, whatever. So so you, it's kind of you always have to deal with that. And I think again, I'll come back to like I think it, it, it you know almost like you know as a product guy, like you can tell like the answer to every challenge usually goes back to the product. And then and, and honestly, it's very difficult to win. I mean, it's, it's possible, but very difficult to win against competition with an inferior product, with a genuinely inferior product. And the other thing I think, uh, you know, people kind of like to say, don't pay too much attention to competition. I think they have, or pay attention to your product and to your customers. I think there's a, uh, 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 you know, I think there's a lot of merit in that statement because, because if you pay too much attention to competition, then you, you, you try to, you know, formulate strategy and activities around it, and and you try to like kill the competition with, with this and that, with you know this feature or or, or that campaign, um, but but it, it it doesn't really work. What what I've seen, what I've personally experienced is always we always you know won against competition not by 
uh, 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 what we did, but by honestly what those competitors did. I mean, basically, eventually, uh, uh, people just stumble and uh, they either you know fail to pivot correctly or they either uh, uh, fail to execute, uh, keep up with product quality, or they they um, uh, you know maybe didn't quite uh, uh, build up a go-to-market organization correctly, all kinds of reasons, right? And, and, and eventually, like, you can, you can tell. That's why, you know, such a small percentage of uh, startups uh, uh, are successful. And that's why, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, those, those new product initiatives in big companies have uh, even less chance of success because, um, because eventually these, these competition just they they just uh, slowly but surely die out, and if you kind of can be slow and steady and you know keep marching forward, you 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 most likely end up being uh, a, you know very compelling solution that that stands out uh, among the rest. Um, uh, so the other one I think I was probably particularly uh, um, uh, I've I've seen a lot amongst. Uh, you know my peers uh, when I when I I mean these days sometimes I you know I people would ask for advice or they look for some investment and and when I see that I'm always very bothered bothered because um, um, I said be honest with yourself I mean here honest means like a very very high degree of intellectual honesty not not like I'm not talking about like telling lies and stuff because the problem is the, the the entrepreneurs are uh, um, uh, by nature so such you know uh, optimistic people such positive people um, a lot of them just they couldn't help it but 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 have very high opinions of whatever they do uh, and or whatever they have very high degree of confidence on you know themselves their product their team. And, 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 and it's, it's uh, so I've actually seen a lot of these things could be very harmful because, uh, because uh, you know, once you really start believing it, then it starts to impact your strategy, right? I mean, I mean I, I'm sure all of you have heard about it. We've got the best product, you know, and certainly we've got the best product. Other people may have best, <laughs> they, they may be 10 times bigger, they may have more revenue, they may have be more profitable, they may have more funding, but we have, we got the best product because nobody really knows if one product is better than the other. And and the other thing, the other thing you always I used to hear a lot is like when we go head to head with with our competitor, we generally win. You know, or we always win if if, if the guy's really aggressive. And 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 so you don't since nobody really knows <laughs> how many of these things actually happened. Uh, I don't know if they generally win or not. Uh, and, and, and when all else fails, they you know, will say things like, you know, this co our company has a great culture, you know, wh wh whatever the definition of a culture. So, so I think a lot of that times, I think spending, you know, what I would always advise people is again, like is spending too much time, like worrying about this kind of stuff, just in abstract and not really backed up by facts is, 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 is not really helpful. And because I mean, there's nothing wrong being uh, uh, positive and and, uh, and and optimistic, but but you shouldn't keep your eye off on the uh, like the product should speak for itself, not like you got the best product. Like I'm just give you an example. Just just assume I I'm just gonna randomly take a uh, let's just take a company like Apple. Take say Apple under Steve Jobs. Okay, think about go back. 15 years when when uh, when he just launched iPhone. So did he, you know, did he stand up and say we've got the best product? Like, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's kind of a given, but I just can't imagine he would say that. Like, maybe I, I can't can't imagine uh, Steve Jobs will say that that sort of stuff either. Pub, because I know he certain. I don't think he said it publicly, but I know for sure. He didn't say it privately because all I hear is like he keeps shouting at people for you know things he didn't like about the product they were building, right? So so so, but at the end of the day, the the product speak for itself, right? And but even I mean I, I'll go even a bit further. Go to the second one. You know, uh, 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 I think Apple actually has more iPhone actually has more market share in the U.S. now, but globally, I think it it, it is still 
like from a volume or maybe even from a revenue perspective, it's probably still second to Android. So, so if you think like, you know, if you walk head to head, if you walk into a say a say a say a say a mobile phone store and and order a mobile phone and you're presented with iPhone and lots of other Android brands, I mean, I don't even think. Apple could claim, well, you know, when they when they go head to head with their competitor, they generally win, right? But they win enough, and then they win it with such better margin, and they have such a loyal and growing customer base, right? That's what makes the company great. So, so again, that's why you can see a lot of these uh, statements are, are are actually not really necessary, you know, to 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 to, to, to building a great company. And 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 then uh, um, the other thing I've, I've I've really seen is I I feel very sad about this because I I, I you know I, over the years I've I've known a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, my friends they uh, uh, they they honestly didn't have that great of a uh, 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 you know they they really didn't have that great of an experience and 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 I used to talk to them about it and I could tell why they're struggling. Uh, and, and, and a lot of these cases boils down to not this, not setting the expectation for a, for a marathon run, you know, because, uh, you know, I think someone, uh, I think we all know, right, you know, doing a startup is not a one year game, uh, you know, it's, it's not even a five year game, it could be a 10 year or more kind of experience, right, if you're lucky. So, uh, so but, but what I've seen is because there's so much pressure uh, to you know, raising money or you know, hiring people, and present a positive image to market uh, the institution. So people just be just set unrealistic goals. You know, I, I've just seen it over and over again. And and a lot of times these goals do get paired back. You know, after say the funding raised, but it was sometimes these goals are so. Optim so aggressive that even even after they pair it back, it's it's still it's still very unrealistic. So so then what happens is, uh, say you know six months later, a year later, uh, 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 almost inevitably, like they they fail to deliver, uh, they fell short, and then once they feel feel fell short, uh, it's not really their fault, other than you know not the fault of execution because. Again, the goal was just the expectation was clearly uh, uh, unrealistic, but but then uh, uh, you know as an entrepreneur we we you know we take it very personally. We we it's like so we like to say we don't care about ourselves, but but we don't want to. We really feel felt we you know this, we 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 felt we let the employee down and let the let the investor down. So what what can you do? But unfortunately. What I've seen is uh, in those cases, in many of those cases, the um, uh, uh, instead of like collect, correcting uh, 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 the practice of uh, uh, setting unrealistic goals, um, a lot of folks I've seen, they, they try to make up for the shortfall uh, by uh, uh, setting the goal even higher. Uh, you know, just they, they find a reason why um, um, uh, 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 like this past year or, or past quarter or, or past six months failed, but surely going forward, you know, the market is going to happen, the product is getting fixed, and we're going to do much better. So basically, they're kind of back to the to the vicious circle, cycle again, and 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 that, that sort of stuff is very harmful because because that's where I see you know they churn team, they churn investor, uh, they churn leaders, you know, the, uh, so. Uh, and and uh, and 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 it it's just not you you you're kind of like doing uh, starts and stops. You're not certainly not running a marathon. You're you're kind of you know you you it, it's not it's not the right way to to win, win a race. So I would as I said these days, luckily these days the import the engineers and investors they're 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 so um, um, they're they're actually a lot more uh, they're they're um, uh, they're a lot more savvy than than you think, and they can kind of really tell whether uh, uh, whatever you project is 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 realistic or not. So you kind of almost by you're almost better to be realistic, even better just be known as as con being conservative. It wouldn't actually wouldn't hurt you at all. So so that's kind of what I always tell people to. 
to try to dial back because otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, it's it's just difficult to keep up over you know over, over these entrepreneurial journeys. Then uh, the last thing I want to talk about before we uh, we 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 get into Q and A is uh, is is you know now you kind of grow. Um, uh, into a uh, uh, you know uh, into a business say with you know 10 million revenue 50 million revenue so you kind of start to worry about scale and things are falling apart and generally that's a pretty good problem to have but but I'm not actually I'm not going to talk about uh, scaling the business at all uh, in this talk because it's a big topic and then honestly that's such a good problem to have I, I just feel like it, it, you know, it's 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 just not not really worth uh, uh, too much time to worry about it when when you're just getting started. But there is one thing uh, uh, that's pretty important. Is I've I, you know a lot of times I uh, there there are like people come to me and they ask for some like seed funding and and stuff like that, or they're just getting started and and they'll they'll outline this business. And I would always ask like. You know, when you are successful, you know how big a business can it be? To be honest, many of those businesses I've seen, they can't even ask answer that question. You know, these folks, they have the passion. They have, they even sometimes they even have, you know, the product half built. They almost, they even have the customers lined up. Sometimes they even closed some customers. But, uh, but, but you look at the problem they're trying to solve. Look at uh, 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 you know, uh, look at the potential market size. Even in the best case scenario, in theory, they can't even uh, 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 they can't even elaborate a way to scale. You know, so now that's I think that's kind of inexcusable because because um, uh, I do see a lot of people these days going around and try to raise money unsuccessfully, fail because of that. Because, uh, because you know, investors the money. There's so much money. Investors are desperate to to invest the 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 you know the the, the, the invest startups. But you, we've got to give them a, a a a reason to believe that this business can potentially be the you know the the next Cisco or the next Google or you know so 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 it's so at, at least has has a theoretical way of getting there, right? And and I feel like uh, sometimes. People haven't thought that through, and uh, and 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 it's it just it's, it's so unfortunate because there you do all that work and then and then you're gonna have to try to reposition and it never 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 come through authentically. You know they don't they don't even really believe in their pitch themselves. Uh, but it's a it's a good product, but maybe it's just not the the kind of business that 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 in, that, a, that a Silicon Valley investor would invest. Or uh, which also means it's probably not the kind of business that's worth uh, you, you know, quitting a, a high-paying job at Google or Cisco or VMware or Amazon to, you know, to to go take the risk and build, right? So, uh, so, so I've, I've I've definitely seen the the the, 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 the scale becoming a, a huge issue. I, I, you know, I it's it's amazing. Like I, you, these days, even even like folks who would you know these 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 companies. I've I've seen these companies been in a, uh, uh, in business, and they've already raised funding for like four or five years already. And I you know meet them at uh, 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 say at a trade show, and I end up talking to the founder or talking to the CEO, and I kind of ask them, you know, again, where is this going? How big can it be? Surpri surprising. Uh, uh, amount of time I hear like they don't really believe their business will go grow very big, and I always find that just astonishing because because surely like maybe you haven't thought enough about it. I mean, surely you could have figured out, <laughs> figured out at least the theory it could it could grow, right? Then then if you can't even explain to to me, then then what will your investors think? Why would anyone ever want to acquire you? You know, or or you certainly are not on the path toward a you know toward IPO. So so anyway, I I, I feel like you know besides the product, uh, uh, certainly for for us you know engineers, product people, not pure dreamers. At, at least we should be uh, we should still 
you know, uh, while being as, you know, as honest and as not as conservative as we should be, but we should at least have a, <laughs> have a solid theory uh, and reasoning right, that, you know, we're building a, a really big business, right? So, so yeah, so, so that's about it. That's kind of what I, what I want to share, like in, in about 30 minutes. And, uh, and, and, you know, if, if you guys would love to hear from you, if you have, uh, you know, if, if you, if you, if you have some ideas or you want to uh, you want to talk more and this is my linkedin profile okay so naveen thank, is, should we is there yeah, any questions yes thank you thank you uh Cheng. really appreciate you want to close your i guess the powerpoint i suppose can you hear me yeah yeah okay awesome all right, so um, so Shang, just just to get started with our first question, well, I mean, just on a simple, uh, like from a, you know, just because what I'm more curious is, like I know, uh, you know, you, you've been doing this entrepreneurial journey for last almost, I would think, 18, 20 years, I would think, with the first company you started. And so from, but last 10 years, I know you obviously gave a lot of insights, really amazing. I appreciate it very much and I'm sure it's very useful for all of us and including all the attendees. So what is one thing you think over 10 years you feel um, you learned and something which in the, you know, oh, that's one thing. And then previously, which you had made mistake, but you corrected it here. You know what I'm So something new, which obviously over this 10 year, this time of your entrepreneur, like in Rancher Labs and now obviously uh, I would say Rancher Labs after cloud.com. So yeah, it's probably, uh, you know, uh, I think I think the last 10 years has been, I mean, if I want to put it in, in, in you know, one sentence, the four whole B2B industry is, 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 is probably the tremendous uh, recognition and understanding of, of the, you know, SaaS uh, recurring kind of business model. Right, like that's you know it, it crashed quite a bit in the last last six months, but but it, it really kind of reached this height about a year ago. You know, around actually around the time we sold the company, so I kind of was able to to grow with that. And uh, and I think nowadays I uh, you know really uh, appreciate uh, you know words like customer success, adoption. Uh, they just just the the, the 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 idea that you can't just go hunt for big deals. You gotta, you know, this this this, this sort of uh, uh, bottom up way of building business. So so that sort of stuff is 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 is, is probably what 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 I what I personally experienced is the biggest mm -hmm. change since yeah, the nice. last ten years. Very nice. So one question now from the uh, audience is, you know, the Vikram uh, is asking, how did you know that your idea product has enough market or customers and what process did you follow to gather data points and get convinced yeah i mean we cash that's a uh that's a that's a good question and uh and it is a it is actually a it is actually not obvious um at all because uh, because uh because you know like i remember like i remember i once i got to i, I was there's a, there's, it was a long time ago. It was, it was uh, Jack Ma was 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 here? Right? The Alibaba's Jack Ma was here, like giving a talk, and everyone, someone went up and asked a question, kind of like this. It's a variation of this, like, "Oh, Steve Jobs said you should," because Jack Ma was saying, "Customers, customers, customers." Right. The guy went up and said, "You know, Steve Jobs said don't listen to customers." <laughs> uh, uh, so, so now you keep saying customers, like you're like contradicting Steve Jobs. So, 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 so Jack was like, uh, 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 no, I, I, he didn't, uh, he, he didn't believe he, uh, he was because, because he's like, basically, uh, his, his point was Steve Jobs knew what, what uh, customers wanted, right? Maybe in many cases better than, than the customers themselves that, that I guess that turned out to be true. But, but, uh, but, um, but then the question was, then the question was funny. Then the guy stood up and said, you know, yeah, but in that case, how do we know like what customers want without going out and like doing the surveys and being data driven, you know, hiring a bunch of like do some market research, right? So, so, 
I just remember that poor guy. And 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 then, and then Jack Jack was like, if if you don't even have the insight of knowing what customers want, you have no business starting a company. So, so I it was really, like really blunt, right? But there's some truth to that because that's why I said, you know, you got to have some insight, right? And yeah. and I, so I always tell people, actually, you know, you yeah, you can like. Uh, yeah, you know, it's 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 not bad. I think you kind of that's kind of what we're doing right now. It's always good to go around and and talk to talk to a lot of uh, customers or potential customers, gather the feedback, and that's why I also said usually the best time to do that is in your current job because you're already talking to those customers and you should be you know picking up hints right what they really want or what the current solutions are lacking. You know that's usually the right way to do it. And 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 to be honest. Uh, so, so I would never suggest that. Uh, I would never. I would not personally. I would not quit a job and then go talk to customers for a year, potential customers for a year. Try to collect their feedback and then try to define a product. I, I think that's wrong. I think the right way is you kind of again have to build some insight, build some conviction yourself. Now, then that shouldn't stop you later on. Then, then you know while you build the product, you go talk to customers and then collect you know, additional data and try to refine your, your understanding. So, so, so anyway, so that's, that's my answer. Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Shane. Uh, so next is from Avinash Sirs, who is a fellow entrepreneur saying, congrats on your continued success. When there are multiple players in the domain, what specific steps would you recommend to, um, to take as a startup with limited resources for investors and customers? Yeah, I mean, if you if you already you already you're already in a startup, uh, uh, that's a little different. But uh, if you're you know, let's just say if you're kind of trying to decide whether to start a company or not, I, I would suggest you seriously and you're very interested in this. But if you don't really know a way, obvious way to differentiate against all of the amongst these multiple players, I, I would suggest you seriously consider joining them, joining one of them, joining one that you like the best, right? And hopefully with your, you know, with your passion, with your knowledge, with your insight, they'd be more than happy to, to have you on board. But, 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 you know, let's just say you're already running a competing business um, and, and, then, and then you try to go raise money and the investors say, how are you different? From, from all these other guys and customers like I'm investing with, why is there a reason I should be uh, uh, in, uh, in investing in you? Again, I would, I mean, this, this is usually the saying, you gotta be different. You gotta be, you know, don't be better, just be different. You know, you gotta, you gotta uh, at least, <laughs> you gotta at least craft a solution that, that, uh, uh, that attract, you know, a small segment of the market, at least, at least that's what I always do. You know, try to grow uh, a loyal, fo loyal following amongst uh, a small section of the market, and that's that's very powerful. You know, in 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 politics, think about it. Like in politics, like a lot of times people even say, like you know, it's the it's you know we we were just through an, an election. Like that's why like the turnout is as important as uh, as, 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 you know, as the polls, right? Like you, you could have better polls, but if people don't turn out, they don't have passion to turn out to vote for you, you're gonna lose. But, but that bar is very high because in politics, you have to have like, in the end, you have to get like more than 50% of the vote or you, you have to actually be number one, you know, in some way, right? Against all your, all your competition. The, the, but in business, the, the bar is actually quite a bit lower because if you, can somehow build a, 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 you know, a loyal following, a differentiated offer for a sex, subsection of people for some use cases. Let's just say you, you only get 10% of the market or 5% of the market, but the, the users are like extremely loyal. I mean, you could be, still could be the next Apple. So, so it's, it's just, you know, I, I just think I, I I just think so. That's why I see my my answers tend to always go back to building a differentiated product. You know, when you're when you're confident about your ability to um, uh, retool the product, you know, you, you, there's 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 always a <laughs> there's always a way out of a tough situation like this. So the next question is again from Avinash is 
is uh, one of the thing is uh, in open source because I think most of your startups have been in open source. Right. Right. Movement. I mean, even in cloud and the last one as well as looks like the new area. Now, so his question is, I'm assuming the community was an important factor for Rancher. So is there anything you would do differently if you want to build a community again? Any lessons that you learned that you can share? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I, I you know, I, 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 you know, I really think, um, you know, I think open source is really uh, effective because uh, you know, that's why in my current company, we're, we're still, you know, we're, we're still doing a lot of open source. Um, uh, the, what, what, what open source gives you is, is a way to, uh, you know, it's a way to reach uh, a user base and a way to uh, uh, get the feedback from that user base, you know, very, very cheaply, right? Like it's, a, it's amazing how cheap open source is when it comes to trial and error, you know, trying out new ideas. The, uh, the, um, the, you know, I, I, you know, I saw like I had some friends, they're, they're doing Y Combinator, they're doing that process. Uh, you know, they, they're fresh grads, so, so they don't pay themselves very much, right? They raise a little bit of money and they go through that 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 incubator process for like three months or six months and then launch a product it's like they got one try right so so i still i mean that's amazing because people think wow they're they're, they're so efficient you know so cheap but i still think that's too expensive like open source is vastly superior to that because because like it just costs so much to these days it costs so much to launch a service to uh, you know, do the design, do the branding, like, and, and if you're not, if you don't do everything perfectly, really, you get a false negative, which is probably even worse, like you have a perfectly good idea, but, but somehow you didn't, so you, you have to be wholeheartedly, right, you have to really, really do it, like, 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 it's the last thing you, you want to do, so, so, so it's very expensive, but, but open source, I, 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 I just, oh, I'm always amazed, over the years, how how cheap it is to to try something, to launch a product, and then um, and then when there's no no traction, uh, you know it immediately, and there's really no cost, uh, uh, you know, terminating that project or stop investing that project. So so it's really good. Like like that's probably that's probably yeah that's probably my biggest learning you know i think in the early days of rancher i was more in the mood of like we got to make it work we got to make it work and i think as time make a particular project work i think as time work went on i i think i increasingly realized if these are more like hit based businesses you know if you get it right you should be like you know if you write a song or imagine you write a song write a book shoot a movie like if it's something that's not hitting it's, if it's something not people are not picking it up like like it's it, it could happen one thing a long time some great you know my work of masters get rediscovered you know decades later or something right but that's very rare like most of the stuff it's probably better to just move on so i think that's that's <laughs> So, Sheng, uh, because in this open source that, that leads to another question. I remember attending, uh, you know, one of the, there was a Thai, uh, you know, the Silicon Valley had uh, done a meeting with Jim Whitehurst and invited some charter members. I also attended that many years ago before it was bought by IBM. So, Jim Whitehurst was the CEO of Red Hat. So, one thing interesting, because there were so many open source companies because Red Hat was the first billion dollar open source software company. And then obviously it was acquired by IBM for a huge amount, I think 25 billion plus or something. So um, he said that many people think open source, you just give something open source, it'll happen. He says the success was because of the community Red Hat had created, because of the community. So he was saying, I mean, that was his at least, my at least I remember learning was that it in open source, based companies have to focus on community building. 
I yeah, know, I I did you so. have the similar experience? I mean, I yeah, know. I think so. I mean, I think community is the uh, by community, you know, community is a uh, but the community of developer community, of user community, of like partner community, vendor community. But but the most important one is the user community. So yeah, so uh, 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 so 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 yeah. I mean, I think I totally agree. But the 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 the, the, uh, the measure, it, it's it's like. It's it's like the measure of the success of a movie is the ticket sales, right? Yeah. So 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 this one, yeah, the measure of the success of a uh, open source business or open source project is its community. So so I think it's that's that's a given. But yeah. but 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 what I I think what I was trying to say before was like Red Hat had a great community. I mean, they always had it. Like they. Uh, maybe initially they didn't even realize how valuable that community was because they were the first. And then finally, like Jim Whitehurst realized this community is not only, it's so valuable that they can, you know, they can make over a billion, two, three billion dollars out of that community. So, so, so that all made sense. But I, now, but I think now what I'm thinking is, it's almost like building, you know, if you're, if you're building a new company, you, you know, you're trying to use open source as a, as a go-to-market strategy, what I was trying to say before is don't assume your very first try will necessarily be successful. So if that one is not successful, you know, instead of trying to be the dead horse, trying to essentially, you know, uh, like nobody's watching my movie. So I'm going to pay people to watch my movie. I mean, that's just not going to make it into. That's a good one. Process, right? So, so you got to, that's what I mean. Like, how yeah. do you, yeah. So most people, most people didn't have Red Hat because Red Hat already had a great community. They always had it, but uh, but but you know most companies like us didn't have it in the beginning. So we had to build it. Yep. Well, we're coming to the time. So last question I would ask you, um, Shang, is um, so any words of wisdom for some of the folks who are trying to start now? Any trends and opportunities you see today? Uh, whether it's an open source area or in general, if you had to start another, I know you're already doing your company. Yeah, gee, but I let's mean, say I, there's I, another I idea, but you can't focus on it. You can give it out to other yeah, folks in the audience. I, I think there's a lot, but I would I would tend to go back to just an area that again you have unique insight for, which is most likely an area you're working on right now, or like very adjacent to what you're working on right now. I wouldn't get, you know, like like you know when. You know, a year, uh, maybe a year ago, yeah, when I was thinking, you know, after SUSE, what is it going to do? And, and back then, uh, you know, like uh, blockchain was, crypto was very hot, right? And, and I was also kind of interested in it. But then I realized I don't really have any unique insight, you know, so, 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 so it's, 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 it's hard to, to, yeah, say those are the areas that's, uh, uh, that, that, that's good. Therefore, you know, you should try to work on it, I think. I think you know. Now looking back, maybe it was a great idea. I didn't. I was lucky. You know, I didn't. I didn't try to do a crypto company under yeah. the current circumstances. But 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 ultimately, I didn't do it because because I just didn't have enough insight. Yeah, and no, no, that's a very good point you mentioned. You know, many entrepreneurs they have expertise domain in one area. Suddenly they want to do something. They're fed up with doing that for many years. But then they realize that now they have to start all over from the beginning. And then it takes longer and you never know, they might not even succeed, right? Because they just yeah. want to do something different. But if those who've just stuck to their domain, one after another, I've seen so many serial entrepreneurs. That's right. Very successful. Even I remember this like G Scaler founder. Now it's a public company. And he has been doing security companies from late 90s. I remember one by one, just focused on security space selling. And finally, so so that's that's a very unique insight. And of course, for all of us to remember that. With that, I would like to thank you, Shang. Really, really appreciate your coming all at this, taking this uh, precious time out of your family or work in the evening and coming here and sharing your insights. So thank you again. And thanks to everyone. And have a wonderful evening. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.